Salt and Stall does one small thing for writers, and sometimes it becomes a big thing. We provide time and space. That's it. It sounds like a really simple concept, but it can, it can really make a difference. It can make a profound difference. How many of you know Bob Prohl, the writer in Ithaca? Lots of Bob Prohl fans. I know I'm not supposed to have favorite Salt and Stall photographs, but if you, if you pick up our little call for entries flyer, two of them are on this little flyer. I know that not all of you can see this. The top photo is Bob Prohl in 2013 lying in the grass, and he did not get Lyme disease. I just want you to know that. So don't be scared to come out to the country. The other photo is a little bit smaller, and for those of you in the back, I'll describe it to you. It's a young man in a Brooklyn sweatshirt sitting on the floor in a carpeted space, and there are probably, I don't know, three or four dozen single white sheets of paper kind of strewn across the floor. And this was Ocean in 2013, and this was, this was what was to become the manuscript that he's here to read to you from. And it's an honor. It, we're so proud. I don't know, I think I wasn't going to bring up sort of what's going on in the world, but I think it's good to be reminded that good things happen to good people. They require our support and encouragement. I'm so pleased that Salt and Stall can participate in that in the small way that we do and we're so excited when a book like this sort of comes into the world and you're able to read it and these words are able to be shared with a wider audience so all of you writers we're, we're here we're here for you I hope we're here for you Ocean Vong is the author of Night Sky with Exit Wounds published this past April from Copper Canyon Press a Ruth Lilly Fellow from the Poetry Foundation Ocean has received honors and awards from Poets House the Elizabeth George Foundation, the Academy of American Poets, and a Pushcart Prize. His poetry and fiction have been featured in the Kenyan Review, The Nation, New Republic, The New Yorker, The New York Times, Poetry, and the American Poetry Review, which awarded him the Stanley Kunitz Prize for Younger Poets. This year, Ocean was honored with a Whiting Award, an annual prize given to emerging writers of exceptional talent. And I want to share I'm almost done. We're going to get to Ocean really quickly, I promise. I've read a lot of what's been written about Ocean and his writing over the last two years, and this is one of my favorite sections. It's from the Whiting Awards Selection Committee. What a pleasure to behold how Ocean Vong writes with such attention to the inside of our ears, the oral island. This original, sprightly wordsmith of tumbling, pulsing phrases pushes poetry to a new level. His collection, Night Sky with Exit Wounds, forms an autobiography of sorts, tracing relationships with fathers, mothers, and lovers, and with a country that Vong left when he was a young boy. The imagery in his work is often shimmeringly beautiful, but it's cut through by intimations of violence and its after effects. The collection is a stunning introduction to a young poet who writes with both assurance and vulnerability. Visceral, tender, and lyrical, fleet and agile, these poems unflinchingly face the legacies of violence and cultural displacement, but they also assume a position of wonder before the world. I've been sweating this introduction for seven months when we first put this together because I wanted to say something personal about Ocean, and the only thing I could really think of was my very first impression, which of course is still true today. Ocean and Peter arrived fairly early for the residency. They came before anybody else did and sort of you know, poked around and found which room Ocean was going to be in. And it didn't take 10 minutes. And Ocean was thanking me profusely, sincerely. You know, Honestly, thank you so much. This is so perfect. I remember him saying this. And I thought, this was only my second summer there. And I thought, oh man. You, haven't, you just got here. You're going to be here for a month, and I really hope that you love us this much when you leave. But it was a sincerity and an honesty and a graciousness. Um, and I think anyone that knows Ocean now would describe him that way, and that first impression was still, still quite accurate. Um, and it's really organizations like Salt and Stall and all of these not-for-profits that are out in the world, the Whiting Award and 
Copper Canyon Press and Narrative Magazine, all of these organizations that are supporting and lifting up artists of talent and writers of talent, and we really are the ones to thank you, and we're glad you're doing the work that you're doing, so thank you, Sally, and thank you, writers, and thank you, Ocean, for being a part of our community. Please give a warm welcome for Ocean Vaughn. Hello, everyone. Um, can you hear me okay? It's a good volume. Uh, is it okay if I take a picture of you guys? <laughs> You know, um, I, when I was writing, I think this is true perhaps of any writer, when I was writing this book, I never imagined that anyone would care, you know, I would, as, especially as a poet, um, so, you know, thinking about these crazy, crazy images and metaphors at two in the morning in my pajamas, my most likely vitamin deficient. And, um, <laughs> I, so it's still such a a shock to me, um, and also a gift to see, you know, people standing. You know, like I like I want to just invent chairs for you all. But, uh, <laughs> but thank you, thank you for that. Um, so just be yourself. <laughs> thank you. It, it it always makes me happy to see. Um, people come out and support a local bookstore, uh, support the wonderful uh, Salt and Salt Foundation, and to be here for poetry. Um, I think language is one of the most valuable gifts um, and the bridges we have. Um, and uh, it takes all of us to build it. And so thank you for that. I, I, it was true, you know, Salt and Salt was my, um, my first residency, and I've only been to one other since. But, um, it was so perfect that I never went anywhere else. I keep going back here to do work. Um, uh, and it, it was, it was such a, I, I did feel so thankful, and even more so, you know, because I didn't, I didn't know that there would be uh, a chef at five days a week, you know? <laughs> um, and, and, and she asked me, you know, what do you want to eat? You know, I never, uh, I never considered that, you know, all the choices. <laughs> So I said something dumb at first. I just said a spaghetti. <laughs> Anyways, I got more courageous. Uh, I'll start with uh, this sort of Ars Poetica. Threshold. In the body, where everything has a price. I was a beggar. On my knees, I watched through the keyhole, not the man showering, but the rain falling through him. Guitar strings snapping over his globed shoulders. He was singing, which is why I remember it. His voice, it filled me to the core like a skeleton. Even my name knelt down inside me, asking to be spared. He was singing. It is all I remember. For in the body, where everything has a price, I was alive. I didn't know there was a better reason. That one morning, my father would stop. A dark cult paused in downpour and listen for my clutched breath behind the door. I didn't know the cost of entering a song was to lose your way back. So I entered. So I lost. I lost it all with my eyes wide open. Um, my, uh, my family 
is mostly uh, illiterate, um, including my mother. The war interrupted uh, her education. And um, I often like to read this poem when I can, because it's in her voice. Um, but it's a, in a, a, a mythology. I was thinking of what do we make of our histories um, through stories, but a mythology in the way uh, Homer made the epics and Dante, all based on real life, but um, we seldom have control over our lives. You know? But when we write, uh, we get a rare moment of uh, relative control and we get to create our own world. And so this is my attempt of making uh, a world that my mother inhabited. Immigrant Haiban. It's an epigraph from Edmund Jabe, which reads, the road which leads me to you is safe, even when it runs into oceans. Then, as if breathing, the sea swelled beneath us. If you must know anything, know that the hardest task is to live only once. That a woman on a sinking ship becomes a life raft, no matter how soft her skin. While I slept, he burned his last violin to keep my feet warm. He lay beside me and placed a word on the nape of my neck where it melted into a bead of whiskey, gold rust down my back. We had been sailing for months, salt in our sentences. We had been sailing, but the edge of the world was nowhere in sight. When we left it, the city was still smoldering. Otherwise, it was a perfect spring morning. White hyacinths gasped in the embassy lawn. The sky was September blue, and the pigeons went on pecking at bits of bread scattered from the bombed bakery, broken baguettes, crushed croissants, gutted cars, a carousel spinning its blackened horses. He said the shadow of missiles growing larger on the sidewalk looked like God playing an air piano above us. He said, there's so much I need to tell you. Stars, or rather the drains of heaven waiting. Little holes, little centuries opening just long enough for us to slip through. A machete on the deck left out to dry. My back turned to him, my feet in the eddies. He crouches beside me, his breath a misplaced weather. I let him cup a handful of the sea into my hair and wring it out. The smallest pearls, he says, and all for you. I open my eyes, his face between my hands, wet as a cut. If we make it to shore, he says, I will name our son after this water. I will learn to love a monster. He smiles, a white hyphen where his lips should be. There are seagulls above us. There are hands fluttering between the constellations trying to hold on. The fog lifts and we see it, the horizon suddenly gone, an aqua sheen leading to the hard drop, clean and merciful, just like he wanted, just like the fairy tales, the one where the book closes and turns to laughter in our laps. I pull the mast to full sail. He throws my name into the air, and I watch the syllables crumble into pebbles across the deck. Furious roar, the sea splitting at the bow now. He watches it open like a thief staring into his own heart. 
all bones and splintered wood, waves rising on both sides, the ship encased in liquid walls. Look, he says, I see it now. He's jumping up and down. He's kissing the back of my wrist as he clutches the wheel. He laughs, but his eyes betray him. He laughs despite knowing he has ruined every beautiful thing just to prove beauty cannot change him. And here's the kicker. There's a cork where the sunset should be. It was always there. There's a ship made from toothpicks and super glue. There's a ship in a wine bottle, on a mantle, in the middle of a Christmas party, eggnog spilling from red solo cups. But we keep sailing anyway. We keep standing at the bow, a wedding cake couple encased in glass. The water so still now, the water like air, like ours. Everyone's shouting or singing, and he can't tell whether the song is for him or the burning rooms he mistook for childhood. Everyone's dancing while a tiny man and woman are stuck inside a green bottle thinking someone is waiting at the end of their lives to say, hey, you didn't have to go this far. Why did you go so far? Just as a baseball bat crashes through the world. If you must know anything, know that you were born because no one else was coming. The ship rocked as you swelled inside me, love's echo hardening into a boy. Sometimes I feel like an ampersand. I wake up waiting for the crush. Sometimes the body is the only question in answer can't extinguish. How many kisses have we crushed to our lips in prayer, only to pick up the pieces? If you must know, the best way to know a man is with your teeth. Uh, a lot of this book also attempts to uh, navigate what it means to be a queer body, uh, particularly a queer body in America, and uh, how some of us, including some of my dear friends, um, wouldn't make it as such. On Earth, we're briefly gorgeous. It's broken into segments. Each segment is uh, number one. One. Tell me it was for the hunger and nothing less. For hunger is to give the body what it knows it cannot keep. That this amber light widowed down by another war is all that pins my hand to your chest. One, you drowning between my arms. Stay, you pushing your body into the river only to be left with yourself. Stay, one. I tell you how we're wrong enough to be forgiven. How one night after backhanding mother, then taking a chainsaw to the kitchen table, my father went to kneel in the bathroom until we heard his muffled cries through the walls. And so I learned that a man in climax was the closest thing to surrender. Say surrender. Say alabaster, switchblade, honeysuckle, goldenrod. Say autumn, say autumn despite the green in your eyes. Beauty despite 
daylight, say you'd kill for it, unbreakable dawn, mounting in your throat, my thrashing beneath you like a sparrow, stunned with falling. One. Dusk, a blade of honey between our shadows, draining. One. I wanted to disappear, so I opened the door to a stranger's car. He was divorced. He was sobbing into his hands that tasted like rust. The pink breast cancer ribbon on his keychain swayed in the ignition. Don't we touch each other just to prove we are still here? I was still here once. The moon, distant and flickering, trapped itself in beads of sweat on my neck. I let the fog spill through the cracked window and cover my fangs. When I left, the Buick kept sitting there, a dumb bull in pasture, its eyes searing my shadow on the side of suburban <coughs> houses. At home, I threw myself on the bed like a torch and watched the flames gnaw through my mother's house until the sky appeared bloodshot and massive how I wanted to be that sky to be filled with every flight and fall at once. One. Say amen. Say amend. Say yes. Say yes anyway. One. In the shower, sweating on the cold water, I scrubbed and scrubbed and still remained. One. It's not too late. Our heads haloed with nets, and summer too early to leave any marks. Your hand under my shirt, as static intensifies on the radio. Your other hand pointing your daddy's revolver to the sky. Stars dropping one by one in the crosshairs. This means I won't be afraid if we're already here, already more than skin can hold, that a boy sleeping beside a boy must make a field full of ticking, that to say your name is to hear the sound of clocks being turned back another hour, and morning finds our clothes on your mother's front porch shed like weak old lilies. Uh, two more pieces. Uh, this poem is my little attempt uh, to find a safe space, I suppose. Queen under the hill. I approach a field. A black piano waits at its center. I kneel to play what I can. A single key, a tooth tossed down a well. My fingers sliding the slimy gums, slick lips, snout, not a piano but a mare draped in a black sheet, white mouth sticking out like a fist. I kneel at my beast, the sheet sunken at her ribs, a dented piano where rain collected from the night reflects a blue sky fallen into the side of my horse. Blue thumbprint pressed from above as if something needed to be snuffed out, leaving this black blossom dropped on a field where I am only a visitor. A word exiled again from the prayer flickering. Wind streaks the pale grass flat around us. This horse and I, a watercolor hung too soon and dripping. Green waves surround this black rock, 
where I sit, turning bones to sonatas, fingers blurred. I play what I know from listening to orchards unleash their sweetest wrongs. The dent in this horse, wide enough to live in, puddle of sky on earth, as if to look down on the dead is to look up at my own face, trampled by music. If I lift the sheet, I will reveal the heart, huge as a stillbirth. If I lift the sheet, I will sleep beside her as a four-legged shadow, hoof homed to hoof. If I close my eyes, I'm inside the piano again, and only if I close my eyes, no one can hurt me. Thank you once more for being here. I've been thinking a lot about uh, what I said before about this idea of, you know, the world we live in now, we feel so buffeted by it, uh, as if buffeted by a storm, you know. Um, and I, I often think about what, 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 what power, what action do we have left? And most days, um, the only consolation I have is the uh, the power of self pleasure, uh, which also happens to be inexhaustible, uh, especially for you know as a queer person of color. Um, it's the sometimes the most empowered moment of my day. Which is to say, I wrote an ode to masturbation. <laughs> Thank you. Ode to masturbation. Because you were never holy, only beautiful enough to be found with a hook in your mouth. Water shook like sparks when they pulled you out. And sometimes your hand is all you have to hold yourself to this world. And it's the sound, not the prayer, that enters. The thunder, not the lightning that wakes you in the back seat, midnight's neon parking lot, holy water smeared between your thighs where no one ever drowned from too much thirst. The cum shot, an articulation of chewed stars. So lift the joy-crusted thumb and teach the tongue of unbridled nourishment. To be lost in an image is to find within it a door. So close your eyes and open. Reach down with every rib humming the desperation of unstruck piano keys. Some call this being human, but you already know it's the briefest form of forever. Yes, even the saints remember this. The if under every utterance, beneath the breath brimmed like cherry blossoms foaming into no one's springtime. How often these lines resemble claw marks of your brothers being dragged away from you. You whose name not heard by the ear, but the smallest bones in the graves. You who ignite the April air with all your petals here, here, here. You who twist through barbed wired light despite knowing how color beckons decapitation. I reach down looking for you in my American dirt, in towns with names like hope, celebration, success, and sweet lips like little Saigon, towns Laramie, money, Sassford, Jasper, and Sanford towns whose trees know the weight 
of history can bend their branches to breaking lines whose roots burrow through stones and hard facts, gathering the memory of rust and iron, mandibles and amethyst. Yes, touch yourself like this, part the softest hurts, unhealable hunger. After all, the Lord cut you here to remind us where he came from. Pin this antlered heart beat back to earth. Cry out until the dark fluence each faceless beast banished from the ark as you scrape the salt off the cock clit and call it daylight. Don't be afraid to be this luminous, to be so bright, so empty. Their bullets pass right through us, thinking they have found the sky. As you reach down, press a hand to this blood warm body, like a word being nailed to its meaning and lives. Thank you.